Fat Guy Flies RC here. Here in the man cave today, we're going to be doing the unboxing and then later a build video of the Horizon Hobby E Flight T28 Trojan 1.1 meter. I know, I have this thing about Trojans, don't I? So, we're going to do an unboxing real quick. Um, I all I've done is open this one end, but I haven't actually taken the plane out of the box yet. So this will be the first time. Um, anyways, whenever you're opening up any of the these Horizon Hobby planes or any flight planes, it works easier if you open both ends um, because usually they've just got so much vacuum and they're in there so tight that uh, it just makes your life a lot easier. They just come out so much easier that way. All right, let's see if we can. All right, and as usual, very impressive. Uh, everything's packed. Packed like you want to throw the whole things off a cliff and know it's not going to hurt it at all. And it's packed in so well, and everything's got its own little compartment. Everything's nice and sealed. So, sorry I'm not looking at the camera, but uh, here we go. I absolutely love this yellow. It's going to make seeing this plane so easy. And uh, I don't know if that's, hey, you get an extra prop with this. Now, I don't know if that's, you're supposed to change from, well, I don't think you're supposed to change from three cell to, to uh, when you play three cell to four cell, I don't think you're supposed to change props. So uh, I've seen nothing about that so far. I think you're just getting an extra prop. Pre, okay. So extra prop with wonderful manual. As you can see, everything is packed very, very well, which is, I've come to expect no, no less from uh, Horizon Hobby and uh, FMS planes. That's just par for the course with them. And, uh, so, take my razor blade knife here. All right, yeah, this is just packed wonderfully. Everything just kind of peels away there. And the first thing you're going to be removing will be the one-piece wing, which is right here. Beautiful, beautiful wing. Love the finish on this. Beautiful, bright yellow uh, with a navy insignia and a Good old American colors there. Yeah, beautiful plane. Um, through the light, I can see, looks like it's got possibly two spars, possibly, going all the way. Oh, no, no. This is just a channel for servos, and there's a spar that goes all the way, all the way to the end. So, excellent, excellent. Okay, the next thing that you'd be removing, consolidate all your little pieces of foam here. Looks like it's gonna be the fuselage, and it is, okay. And it's got tons of packing and support around it. Beautiful fuselage. Um, they do give you these little prop protectors on the end to keep you from getting cut. Obviously, you have to remove them before you use the plane. Already got your uh, smart ESC or smart. Um, it's an AR631 receiver already in there. You got your uh, smart ESC and uh, 30 amp smart brushless E flight ESC and uh, already installed. Yeah, this is going to be a very, very easy build. Very easy build. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to remove is going to be your can battery hatch or canopy, which is one right there, a nice long piece of uh, grabber tape. So when you put the canopy on, you can grab the tape and pull it up. Um, nice thing about what they've done 
is you have this dam right here. That way when you slide your battery in and you put your canopy in, this dam will stop that battery from moving around. So no need for Velcro or any kind of securing mechanism there. All right, now this piece of styrofoam is not cut away right here. So you're going to slide your horizontal stabilizer um, or elevator. Slide it this way. Don't cut yourself with a knife like I'm about to do. And you'll see because control horn, there's only one way to go. Got two carbon spars, one actually in the elevator and one uh, in the rest of the elevator and actually one in the uh, control surface part in both sections. And as you should always do with any model with a foam hinge, work your hinge right off the bat. And it uh, looks like a very nice laminated hinge. And, uh, and I worked it and already the paint's starting to peel, but that's okay. I can put me some uh, blender tape, which I'm going to do that anyways. I mean, this is your elevator, probably the most important control service you have. I know people don't argue with me. You really, your throttle should be. But, uh, well, that's not like control service. I'm going to put some blender tape there because you're going to have wear and tear on your elevator. And uh, so there's that. And then you don't have anything else except down here you have a little... Uh, a little pocket of, of uh, bits and pieces, which is probably, yes, it's the landing gear and uh, bind plug. And they're incredible tape that we'll use to secure the uh, horizontal stabilizer on there with. And this is, this is just going to be an insanely simple build. And uh, let's see, we got everything out. Make sure there are no little bits and pieces hiding in there. Take that. Take our pieces of foam, pieces of packing foam, and the pieces there, here, and everywhere, and get them out of the way. All right. This over here out of the way. Get it over here out of the way. <laughs> okay. So what we've got here is we have our fuselage. We have our horizontal stabilizer, tail feathers. We got our main wing. Okay. Got our battery or our canopy with the ugliest RC pilot in all aviation history. <laughs> I mean, he is. I mean, would you look at that guy? I mean, this poor guy. But he's a great pilot. He's a great pilot, but he is ugly as sin. All right, so there we go. And of course, your parts bag, extra prop, which I was not expecting. Very pleased by that. Manual. There you go. There's your parts. We're going to stop this video. This is the build. I mean, this is the unboxing, as you can see. And this is so simple. And we're going to come back and build this thing. And uh, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. This is Fat Guy Flies RC. Oh, by the way, this is the bind and fly version because it already has the receiver already in it. So stay tuned. Oh, Fat Guy Flies RC here. Got you here at the T. Fat Guy Flies RC. We're in the man cave. We're going to do the build of the uh, T28 Trojan 1.1 meter, the yellow one with the uh, 3 or 4S capability, uh, smart receiver, smart um, uh, AR631 receiver. And I'm going to do a step that's not called for. Right off the bat, they say you put the wing on and then put the wheels on and put the, the uh, tail feathers on. Um, but I'm going to show something that I have found. And you should do this with any model. You need to go around and anywhere you've got screws that are already factory installed, you should check those connections. Check those screws. Go ahead and make sure they're good and tight. Well, there's some that are inside here, this motor mount here. And if you all refer back to my E-Flight Valiant, the second one I had, and it had a vibration in it. Now, they've put a new and improved motor mount in this. 
and I want to see it, but that, that Valiant had a vibration, okay? Because the motor mount was not secured with the proper amount of glue. You know, maybe a Friday night at four o'clock type production thing. Well, anyways, so, you, so take this off. There's just three little screws, Phillips head, hold it in. And I want to take a look at this. This is nice and strong. I don't feel anything uh, loose in here, you know. But I'm going to go ahead and take Phillips head, because everything in here in this plane is Phillips head, and make sure these are nice and tight. Now, you don't want to go nuts with, uh, you know, metal screws into plastic, but you want to make sure everything's nice and tight, and that feels good. While I'm here, though, it makes it easier to skip ahead a step and go ahead and install the, the main or the front nose gear. Now, if you look right here, you'll see a Phillips head screw in this arm that will, con that will turn the front nose gear. If you look, on this nose gear, there is a... I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's a flat indentation there, okay? Well, I'm going to put that in, take that screw out, put the screw in, and it's going to settle into that flat indentation. This is a Phillips head screw. You don't have to take it all the way out, just enough to give it some clearance. And see, this is easier now. I don't have the cowling in the way, and I don't have to fish my screwdriver through the front of the cowling. Now I can, like I said, I haven't put this thing together yet. This is the first time. Put that uh, indentation and thing towards me. And that should, if I have that out enough. Yeah, it comes out a lot further. That should just drop, or supposed to drop, right down in there. And it does. I'll make sure I've got that. And you can see it. Okay. Okay. Now, you should know immediately if you've got it in there correctly because you'll see that, see how it kind of, it, it should grip. Okay. And whenever you go to physically turn it, if this whole mechanism should try to turn with you. That way I know then I've got that in there correctly, and that's nice and tight. Now, let's make sure that's good and in there. It's not going to go anywhere on me. Make sure that's good. All right. Okay, that looks good. And uh, you know what we could do, just for, just for fun, we could take our handy-dandy servo tester, take a battery, a battery, take a battery, okay, give the servo tester a little bit of power, a little bit of power, and uh, let's see, where's my, that should be my rudder there, all right, Hold on. Hold the phone. All right. Let's see. One. Sorry, I'm being a little rubber. Okay, so they got to tie in together. That's throttle. And that's your aileron. That's your elevator. Where's my my rudder? Oh, okay. That's this one here. That's going to be your number four. This should make. Remember, light to light, dark to dark. Hey. All right. Now looky there. That front nose gear working just like it's supposed to. All right, so put that back in the rudder slot of the receiver. Yeah, they got instead of having this 
this on its own separate servo, they've got a control rod going back to the control, the uh, rudder servo, and they're sharing that servo. So that's fine. Light little plane, that's not a problem. All right, so that takes care of that. Now we can put that off to the side. We know that that puppy's in there nice and secure. Not going to go anywhere. Okay, now it says, supposed to put the wing on, but, by, but we can go ahead and put our cowling back on. Little uh, Phillips head screwdriver. These little Chinese Phillips head screwdrivers are awesome. Absolutely awesome. They come with a lot of kits. Unfortunately, E-Flight doesn't feel the need to give you any tools. So, shame on E-Flight. But, a lot of other tools, a lot of other kits from other areas will give you these cheap little uh, Chinese uh, Phillips head screwdrivers. And like I said, they are awesome. Alright, we'll put that back. And it's just important to me to check my motor mount, check my all the screws, although they're already factory installed. And you should take your prop off because you're going to work on a model, you're going to be binding up, you're going to be giving it power. You know, do you really trust someone else's assembly and everything that they don't have something cross wired in there? And next thing you know, you bind it up, get too close, and cut your finger off. You know, you got the prop. Leave the prop off. Until you're ready you know okay the instructions now say put the main wing on now there's two little pegs back there that that wing is going to settle in and then there's place up front put a screw okay show you what I mean on the wing on the wing you'll see two little pegs Fit in the back, one big screw. They give you an extra screw. So, you've got, got to fish your little wires out here that control your aileron. Pull them out, okay? Provided is a Y that are going to connect both of these wires into one signal to control your aileron. So go ahead and turn this puppy over. Okay. Take your ailerons. You know what? Let me do something that I think will be easier and give you a little less headache. Go ahead and detach the aileron Y. Let's go ahead and let's connect it up. And that way I'm only having to fish for one Y instead of two. Why, man, why? And then whenever you're hooking up servos from to a connection, it's always, there's a light side and a dark side. Light side and a dark side. In this case, we've got yellow and brown. Light to light. And that, that really goes in tight. So I don't think I need to secure that with tape. It's, it's in there nice and tight. Light to light, dark to dark. Okay. Oh yeah, that's it. That's in there good. I feel feel very very confident with that. Turn our model back on. Okay, going to fish that one single Y in there. Why, buddy? Reach up, and try to grab it. That way, put those two pegs that I showed you should fit right in there. Maybe, possibly. Anyways, ah, you got a little bit of foam stuck in them. Hold on, this is some one other thing you got to look out for a little bit of foam stuck in there. And you got to have these pegs to go in there, all right? So, try this again feed your Y through, line them pegs up, all right? Grab that Y. Set that wing down in there. You're going to get one, you get two of these screws. And uh, 
I want to say they're like an eight millimeter. Uh, well, let's just see how long they are. Lengthwise, these screws are 26.5 millimeters. The width of the actual screw itself is 2.7 millimeters. Okay. But there's only, you get two of them. You only need one, but you get two with your kit in case you lose one, like I do. All right, you got your two pegs. Drop in your one screw. Take your Phillips head screwdriver. Okay. And I can already see the wing kind of adjusting a little bit. I'm going to let it I'm going to go all the way down where I hear it, feel it kind of hit. Yeah. And see, I don't have to worry about how far it has a stopping point. Okay, so I know I'm in there, and that wing is on there. Okay, so we're gonna turn the bad boy up over and see. Look at this Y now. This I've got this nice long lead. Now, ailerons on a receiver, the head of the receiver, okay, or the top of the receiver is always gonna go towards the bulk of it. Okay, so your light wires are always going to go that way on the receiver towards the bulk of it. All right, this is our ailerons, which is always going to be, you're always going to have, you know, whatever your, your data, your bind, whatever it is that powers the receiver or programs the receiver, think of that as zero. Your number one position is always going to be throttle. Your number two position then will always be on a spectrum receiver, ailerons. Okay. So we're going to hook up our ailerons. Yeah, that just slides in there just like that. After that, you've got elevator, and then you got rudder. So you've got T for throttle, A for aileron, E for elevator, and R for rudder. So that's uh, pair, I guess, T-A-E-R. So anyway, so it's always going to be throttle, ailerons, elevator, rudder on a spectrum receiver. Okay, now, so I have all my basic control surfaces are hooked up. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is put on the main gear. We've already put the nose gear. This is in the, in the instructions you would put address this, but I went ahead and do that right off the bat. Now, these are just pop-in gear, okay? These gear are keyed in a certain way. As you can see, there's a hole here, and then you got these two retaining clips, and they're very tight. So what you're going to do, either gear, they're ambidextrous, either gear, you're going to put the pointy end in that hole, get it all the way seated, okay, and then take this and pop both of them in. They pop in very distinct, all right? And when they land, the force is going to be that way, so you don't have to worry about the force of a landing popping them out the wrong way so okay get that in there and that pops in very distinctly all right that's good now you've got your nose gear steerable nose gear you got your mains everything we're starting to look a lot like an airplane now now next thing we're going to do stall our tail feathers now as I told you in the unboxing, I noticed you always work your hinge, okay? Always work your foam hinge. I noticed that when I worked it, the little bit of the paint was coming undone from me working it, all right? This is ugly, but this is the underside of the elevator. I put a little bit of Blenderm tape, which is just some really sticky 3M Blenderm tape. Cut a little piece off, I put it down at the very end of the elevator, that way, it's just a little extra security, a little bit of a insurance policy, if you will. Now, obviously, rudder's hooked up, so that leaves me one control rod not hooked up to anything. Well, let's see. How would this fit? This goes in here. It slides in, so obviously, this is the one that we're going to, it's going to slide in this way, bottom side up. You've got yourself a piece of fuel tubing to close that clevis. You're going to want to move that all the way back towards the main body of the plane, and you're going to take your thumbnail, you're going to open that clevis up, okay? 
Now, the further in that you attach a clevis, the further in on a control arm, the further in, the more control you're going to have. Okay? The further in towards the control towards the moving control surface, the closer you are to it, the more control you're going to have or the more throw you're going to have. Now, on your servo, it's just the opposite. Where you connect your control arm to the arm, or the, your control rod, to the arm of the servo, the further out are, you are, the more control you're going to have or the more throw you're going to have on your control surface, okay? So if you don't want as much control, you want less less control, then move your, the, your, your connecting point of your control rod further in on the servo and then further out on the uh, control arm on the control surface, the further out. But I like maximum deflection, maximum throws, because I can always dial that back you know, electronically. Now this is just going to slide in. You always want to kind of give yourself a little test fit. This is just going to slide in nice and pretty. Okay. And you can kind of tell when you're at the halfway point because the end, the way these are angled in, you'll have that flat part. Also, you can tell by making sure these little V's are even on both sides. I suggest looking at it from this direction and make sure that they just eyeball it. I mean, just make sure that it's nice and even. It does not have to be absolutely perfect, um, but it needs to be as close as you can get to being perfect, okay? Making sure that if they're even on both sides, you got the same amount of triangle there. I mean, you could measure it, I guess, and make sure, but um, it's pretty obvious. I mean, you're not really going to have to do real hard now most this is this used to be a park zone model okay and then it was purchased by e flight it became an e flight model but one of the throwbacks to that is this incredible tape your thing and that's what actually holds this elevator in place is this tape now you can complain about this tape you can sing the praises of it but i will tell you this it works it works real well the biggest challenge is getting it off the, off the uh, backing. And it's nice and clear. It's very strong. You gotta remember this, the pressure is up and down and that's already held in place with the plastic. Pr this way, where you think it'll come, uh, it doesn't require much, okay? It doesn't require much. So you don't need a lot uh, to hold it in place. I think you get at least two pieces, I don't know. Let's see, let's go ahead and do the other side. Oh yeah, you get, okay, so you get a total of four. You know, one, 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 one. Two above, or one above, one below on each side. So, now, if you just absolutely don't like that, you can always get you some good Gorilla tape and put you a piece down there, you know, but, you know, it's up to you, but I'm telling you, that tape does just fine. And uh, it does. It does just fine. Okay. Now we got that there. Let's get our other pieces of tape. Now, it's a little, a little dodgy trying to fit that in there um, on the underside, but it, just a little bit of patience, and you can do it. All right, now I actually put that in like at a little bit of an angle, but you want equal parts on the plastic backing and actually onto the control surface itself. E equal amount. So there you go. And like I said, there's that blender tape I was talking about right here. Let me take our little piece of, piece of tape there. All right, that's on there. Now... We actually have everything essentially hooked up. The rudder is already hooked up, and now we're going to hook up the elevator. Now, me, like I said, I like maximum control. So I am going to take this control rod, or control arm, and I'm going to hook it up to the closest place in on that elevator, which is right there. 
Then we'll slide the tubing back up over it. And that's going to give me maximum throw. I also am the same way about my rudder. Okay. I want a lot of control on my rudder. So I'm going to move that to there. Give myself maximum control. And I can always adjust that or dial that back electronically with my transmitter. Still in line. Okay. Let's make sure that the elevator still looks nice and it's nice and uh, level. Nice and level. Now, let's address our ailerons. I want maximum control there too. So I'm going to slide the fuel tubing this way towards the plane, away from the control service. Undo it. And I'm putting that bad boy right there at the very bottom to give my give me maximum maximum control maximum deflection that's just how I like to roll because I can like I said I can always dial it back in my transmitter now if this was an EDF jet that's going to be flying really fast I wouldn't do that probably would go the opposite way. I'd probably have less deflection because as a plane goes through the air very fast, as, as the air goes over the control surface quickly, the quicker it goes over, the less deflection you need to get uh, a movement or you get a movement of the plane. So therefore, if I'm going slow, I need a lot of deflection to move the plane. If I'm going fast, I don't need as much to move the plane. Okay? Does it kind of make sense? Is it clear as mud for you? <laughs> All right. So we basically have an airplane put together. Okay? This goes in there. Make sure you got your handy dandy little pull tab there. There you go. Got the prop on there, put the nut on the front, and the, or the, the nut right here who's going to control it. That's it. That's basically outside of uh, binding her up and programming with the uh, transmitter, we're good to go. So let's move on to that. We're going to stop the video, and we'll come back, and we'll do the electronic part setup. Thank you for watching. This is Fat Guy Flies RC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. Hello, Fat Guy Flies RC. How y'all doing? All right, we're going to bind up and do the electronic programming for our Trojan T28 1.1 meter. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to show you. I got a battery in there, but she's not hooked up yet. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our, turn our transmitter on. Okay, we'll model select. Okay, and we're going to go down here. We're going to add a new model. Yes, we want to create a new model. That's why we're here. Okay, model type is obviously an airplane. Yes, okay. Model name, we're not going to worry about that right now. And this is kind of important for this model. Uh, aircraft type, we're going to do a normal wing. Okay, and it's going to be, you know, all the way around, just basically it's, it's Normal wing, so it's got one aileron, okay? Or, well, actually, it's got one lead is what you got. You got two ailerons, but they're controlled by one um, Y harness, okay? Now, so basically, it's ready to go right now, but something, well, hi, something you want to do before you bind your model and before you put in transmitter, go ahead and set yourself up a throttle cut. Okay, now me, just for me, I like using F. That's just what I'm used to. So I just go in there and hit F. And, uh, and now I know. So, all right. So I got F. I got my throttle cut. Now I'm going to turn transmitter off. She's ready to receive the new model. Don't have her named yet. Okay. Yeah. But she's ready to receive the new model. Go ahead and take this strap off of here. Now, 
I want to put, I want to use save select, I want it available. Now I can probably won't use it, but I want it available. So, in order to bind save select, and it's kind of tricky because you got to bind your transmitter and keep your finger on the transmitter at the same time. What you're going to do, let me refer, make sure I'm doing this in the right sequence, okay? Make sure your throttle is all the way down. You're going to connect, your throttle, your transmitter is off. You're going to hook up your model power-wise, okay? Put power to it. Press and hold the bind button. Don't take your, you're going to see it's, it's flashing. Turn on your transmitter, holding the bind plug down. Hear it bind? Take your finger off the uh, trans off the receiver. Smart battery. Okay, my my battery's a little low, so it's telling me that already talking, it already knows that my battery's a little low. That is cool. All right. Take sure to make sure that's all the way. Yes. Yes, I know. Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's unplug it. That's cool. It already senses that the battery's a little. It's only got like it's under thirty percent. So, all right, we're gonna turn now. Now that I know, I saw the movement. I saw the double. I know that this is bound up. I'm gonna turn my my transmitter, which sends a signal to the receiver. Turn this back on. I know she's bound. I'm gonna plug her in. Okay. First dance, second dance. The first dance tells you yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. First dance tells you that the A is 3X is, and it's all talking. Second dance tells you that you got safe select. Okay. All right. Now, throttle doesn't come on. Remember that throttle cut? Now I'm turning it on. Now, I want to make sure this is going the right way. So if it pushes my thumb, push, pushes my finger away, then I know that the prop is going the right way. So, so I know we're bound up. Now, I when I do direction testing, I gotta I have to have the plane away from me. I just can't, I just can't look at it. <laughs> I gotta do it. This is me. All right, so I want to make sure my ailerons are working right. And there's my right aileron, left aileron, up elevator, down elevator, right rudder, left rudder. So I know all my controls are working right. I'm going to get her going all the way up throttle ways. That way I know AS3X and safe select should be enabled. Okay. Now. Here's a simple, I know that safe select is on right now. I know I got saves turned on right now. Okay. Now, here's a way to tell. If I turn the model that way, and this control service goes down, and that control service goes up and stays there, it's trying to write the model. Put it like that. Look, that aileron or that elevator is going up trying to write the model. Another quick way, turn the model upside down. Looky there trying to get it corrected, trying to get it back level again. So now I know that SAFE, the SAFE Select technology, the SAFE is up and running, okay? Now, I don't want to always have SAFE. So what I got to do is I got to find me a switch, okay? That is, that, it is, is a good two position switch is what I like, which for this case, I'm going to use my A, you're going to take your controls, your, um, on a spectrum radio, you're going to turn both of these in, the throttle the, on the rudder and the aileron elevator inwards, and you're going to cycle that button you want to use five times. If you notice, you see how it happened, how it reacted? All right, so that tells me one way or the other, one of these is on, safe is on, safe is off. Okay, let's see. With a down... Okay, that means safe is still on, so if I pull the switch up now, the only thing I should have 
is just AS3X, which I do. Because I go up and I see it react a little bit, but it goes right back down. Okay, so that means that AS3X is the only thing that's uh, reacting right now. It's the only thing working. So, which is how I'm going to fly it anyways. I don't necessarily use safe. However, why not have it just in case? Because think about it. You're flying along, you don't have safe turned on, but you got it on a switch. Flying along, bug goes in your eye. Oh man, which way was I doing? Oh crap, I'm upside down, I can't see. Flip your safe, at least it levels your plane. Now you've got a little bit better of chance of not losing your model, okay? Not, not crashing it. So now I can fly it and save with one eye because the bug's in my eye and I can get her down nice and safe. Get my eyes clear, take it, go back to my AS3X flying. Okay? Safe is um, sensory assisted flight envelope is what that stands for. The point of safe is to auto level your plane, okay, to get you back in an altitude or an attitude where you can safely fly your plane nice and level. The bank levels, which means this is a bank, is very limited. It's only going to go so far. It's only going to go this way so far. It's only going to dive so much, okay? And it's going to make it kind of, I mean, for me, boring way to fly, but it's a controlled way to fly. Great for a beginner, great. But the idea is to move away from safe, you know? Keep it there for emergency, but move away from it where you don't have to fly with safe, okay? All right, I've already known all my control. Everything looks nice and trim. Everything looks nice and level. Uh, everything looks straight. If it's a little off, then I can always do a little fine tuning on my uh, uh, transmitter. Now, the model calls for 5% and different percentages for your expo and everything, but that's entirely up to you. How much, uh, you know, dual rates and mid rates and that's an entirely different video. I do have a, a, a video. If you just look on my site, you'll see an explanation of dual rates and, and mid rates and low rates and high rates and what it all means and how to use Expo and everything. Um, for me, for almost all my models, especially a model like this, all three control surfaces, rudder, elevator, and ailerons, I'm going to go with 100% throws and 30% Expo. That's just me. Okay, that's just me. That's how I like to fly. It's what I'm used to. You have to develop your own style and how you want to fly. And some planes are different. Some planes, you know, you only have so much expo on the ailerons and maybe more on the elevator or vice versa or whatever. It just depends on the plane and what, how you like flying. But that's just me. I like 100% throws, 30% expo. That's just how I like to roll with it. But there you go. That's how you bind it up with safe select, how you designate it to a switch, and how you can tell if safe is working. All right? We're going to get a maiden on this, hopefully tomorrow. And uh, thank you so much for watching. This is Fat Guy Flies RC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And God bless y'all. Bye-bye.